All right, we're on to module eight, and that is how to set up the RF glasses and the RF emitter that was part of the package that you purchased. RF glasses do not require line of sight. The emitter, which, as I've shown you before, looks just like that, that can be 300 feet away. It could be in the same room, it could be in a different room, it could be in a closet, it does not matter. It does not require a line of sight. Now that is a, is a fantastic freedom, if I may say so, <coughs> excuse me, um, allowing you to then set up your system however you like, however it's best and most convenient for you, uh, while providing you the signal to be able to, to use the glasses. So distance is there, is you can go up to 300 feet with the glasses and be able to see. Um, and it, it's, it's, just, it's robust. Uh, the emitter itself has got five LEDs here and these five LEDs with a joystick up and down and left and right give you multiple values on how to set up various different displays. And each LED, when you count it left to right, has five values, which will become the same LEDs, but left to right, and I'll go through that in a bit. Those values can come, uh, can help you actually to set up a different technology as you go along. On the IR, you are very limited. You, you might get a very good picture right away, and for those who are looking for just a one-person setup and a very close-range setup, uh, most likely, you might find IR to be actually very attractive in that respect. It's, it's very quick and very simple, but you're not going to be able to do that with lots of different projectors and televisions and, and over, you know, larger distances and everything. This is much more robust. So there are inherent values by going to RF over IR or DLP. Furthermore, this particular emitter, some of you might have seen actually through some other manufacturers. Well, you have seen physically the same one, but as far as functioning, no, you have not. This is a proprietary emitter. It has presets, and these presets we're going to talk about in the other mo module um, are proprietary to 3D now. These presets have been designed by testing and testing and testing various televisions and projectors to then come with the values that best suit that particular technology or that particular type of product and those have been embedded into the table here. So by me moving the joystick either to the left or to the right or up to the down, I am triggering a certain value and that value then is the setup that I need and there are some cheat sheets and guides available on the website that help you to then extract those values. Uh, for instance, uh, I happen to have a plasma television and that's what I'm going to be setting it up. You can go onto the website and the website will tell you you should have four blue LEDs which is left to light and then two red LEDs as a start of your setup. Then that would be the way to go. So that really is functionality of this emitter and it's only proprietary to the 3D now uh, emitter. Now, simple thing. We've got three lights all on and our processor is working. We made certain of it. Now, what we want to do is make certain that the emitter is functioning. So, I've got the emitter cable into the emitter and the second connector, the DIN connector, and I hope I'm close enough that you can see that there are three pins inside the DIN connector. And the way I'm holding it, there's a pin on the top and two pins on each side. That is the correct way to hold it and the easiest way to hold it to then set it up properly onto the processor. So I'm just holding it like that, once again, with a pin on the top, bringing it to the processor, to the back of the processor, and then inserting it into the DIN connector on the processor. As I plug it in, my emitter comes to life. And I've got blue indicating LEDs telling me that it's functioning. When I do get blue LEDs, 
stationary LEDs, such as what you're seeing right now, that means my emitter is working. Now, before these LEDs come in, you might see red flashing LEDs, and if you have gone through different modules, you will most definitely know that I've, we've spoken about those flashing LEDs. That will only happen is while it is tracing the 3D signal and trying to sync to the 3D signal, or when there is no 3D signal available. You do not get to see that just now, and it, it, it sort of, you know, automatically went to blue, reason being we have a 3D signal playing. So our setup has been methodically done to show that there is a 3D display, we put um, image on the screen, and we put the emitter, plugged it in, and right away we've got a 3D signal. Next is to make sure the glasses operate. Now these glasses have been powered and charged for five hours. As I hold the glasses right here, this is the way I would be putting them on my face. Um, I invert them and I'm bringing this closer to the camera for you to see it. There's an on off button. We talked about how to power the glasses earlier. I press the on off button and I should get blinking blue lights. And blinking blue lights tells me the glasses are on. And furthermore, I can see my lenses. My lenses are shuddering means I've caught the signal, the glasses are on. I hope the ca camera has been able to capture that. So that means my glasses are on. So glasses are working, emitter is working, process is working, we go got 3D signal. Next module will cover how to set up this in a 120 hertz environment with a projector and a 3D Blu-ray player.